So guys, the January transfer window is now right around the corner, which can only mean one thing. We are back with the Championship Transfer Room at Roundup. If you're happy to see this series back, make sure to smash a like if you get it 200 likes on today's video. That would be massively appreciated. Basically, in today's video, we're going to be rounding up all the transfer stories and gossip that I've seen going around the Championship over the last week or so. As always, any rumours that we do miss out in today's video, get them in the comments down below, and we'll get them included in the next one. Without any further ado, Let's hop into the rumours. And we'll start out with the big transfer story going around the championship at the moment. That is the interest in Sunderland forward Ross Stewart. It's a real shame that he picked up that long-term injury and has missed so much of the season because his numbers for the amount of games he's played so far this season have been absolutely outrageous. Six goals, three assists, considering that he's only started seven championship matches, one appearance off the bench. He's averaging a goal or assist every 73 minutes and with those sorts of numbers, Comes a hell of a lot of interest and that's what we're seeing in Stewart at the moment. Both Middlesbrough and Rangers are two of the clubs who have been most speculated over in terms of where Stewart could end up. Now reports have claimed that Sunderland are slapping a 10 million price tag on him. They aren't willing to let go of their prized Esther asset on the cheap. The only difficulty that Sunderland will face in this one is Stewart's current contract situation. He is out of contract at the end of the season, but Sunderland do have the option to extend that by a further year. So basically his contract with Sunderland runs until the summer of 2024, which isn't a great deal of time from Sunderland's point of view. They'll be hoping to get him tied down to a new long-term contract, but in terms of maximizing that cash in value, maybe January wouldn't be the worst time in the world to do that. We've seen you know, maybe Blackburn missed the boat a little bit in terms of when they could have properly cashed in on Ben Barrett and Diaz. Didn't happen in the end, and so there's every chance now that they'll be losing him on the free transfer come the summer transfer window. So the ball is very much in Sunderland's court here. Uh, with this squad and, you know, a few more additions, there's still every chance that they themselves can make the top six come the end of the season. But if one of those tantalising bids were to come in, it'd be tough money to turn down. So Sunderland fans would love to get your opinion on this one down below. Sticking with the Middlesbrough transfer news, they're also been linked with the move for Rotherham United midfielder Dan Barlazer. Now, if you've been watching the channel throughout the season, whenever I've brought up Rotherham, we've always spoken about Barlazer in a really high light. I think he's Rotherham's best player, and everything he does for them, conducting the play in the middle, I think they'd be really hard pressed to go ahead and find his replacement. Particularly with, you know, they're on a bit of a sticky patch at the moment in terms of that run of form. If they were to lose a player of his quality in January, I think they'd be really hard pressed to go ahead and replace him. It's difficult because Rotherham are sort of fighting up against it in terms of the budgets that they're working with compared to some of the other juggernauts that are in the championship. You know, financially, Middlesbrough are one of those sides. And particularly when you consider that his contract with Rotherham does expire come the end of the season. Um, I believe that Rotherham have offered him a new deal, but as of right now, there's been no sort of um, pull from his way in terms of signing that deal. And he's sort of waiting it out, it would seem, at this point. So, yeah, Rotherham in quite a sticky situation with that. From Middlesbrough's perspective, I think this one makes total sense. Midfield was a position I thought they prioritised maybe a little bit more so than they actually did in the summer transfer window. Obviously, in the end, they got that loan deal over the line for Alex Moat, but he's not exactly lit it up um, on loan in the first half of the season for Boris. So, going in for a player like Barlazer to fit into that character system, I think makes total sense. But for Rotherham, that'd be a real hammer blow. Norwich City have reportedly been one of the clubs to make a loan inquiry into Brighton forward Dennis Undav. This one would be quite the interesting move. He's not really featured all too much for Brighton since making that move over so far this season. All eight of his Premier League appearances have come from the bench. He's played just 94 minutes of Premier League football in total and so a low move out to the Championship would make sense. Interesting that is Norwich being linked, whether or not that means that there could be some movements from one of the forwards that's already at the club moving on. Um, in terms of last season playing in the Belgian League, absolutely ridiculous record 26 goals and 12 assists last season it's just been the case of him not really getting all too many opportunities at Brighton so a low move would make sense but it'll be interesting if that has the knock-on effect for any of the other forwards at Norwich if they were to pursue this deal and speaking of Premier League strikers coming on loan to the Championship Cameron Archer continues to be linked with a low move to both Preston Middlesbrough two of the most prominent clubs in the links at the moment but several other clubs would also be interested should Aston Villa make him available for a low move 
from the January window. I think it would make sense if they were to go ahead and do that. Honestly, I was quite disappointed that they didn't make that decision in the summer transfer window. It originally seemed like Archer might have been involved with Gerald's plans at the start of the season, but that's not really materialised. And apart from a few cameo appearances off the bench um, in the last few minutes for games for Villa, he's not really had all too much of an opportunity to showcase what he can do. Last season for Preston, though, absolutely prolific. One of the best natural finishers I think we saw in the championship last season. And wherever he was to end up, you know, it probably would only be on a low move until the end of the season. I think he brings in you know, 10 goals, something like that at least. And we had quite an interesting transfer story linking both John Buckley and Bradley Dack from Blackburn to Sunderland. The transfer link here I'm sure coming from the fact that Tony Mowbray managed the pair whilst he was at Blackburn. Mowbray was asked about this in a recent press conference and he sort of went ahead and brushed off these claims but I'm sure he was always going to do that no matter what Sunderland's underlying intent actually was. Rovers fans, I'd be particularly interested to hear from you guys on this one particularly relating to Bradley Dack. He's a player who's had two massive long-term injuries um, over the last few years, which ultimately I do think have had an effect on him and his consistency, you know, to be able to stay fit and being that, you know, match winner for Blackburn week in, week out. Perhaps he's no longer that player. With that being said, I did think he had some, I thought he had some really nice touches actually for their game recently against Norwich. Um, just the five starts for him this season, then nine appearances off the bench. I also believe he is the biggest weekly earner at Blackburn in terms of a wage packet as well. So, Rovers fans, what is your current thought on Dak? What would it take in terms of an offer for you to be tempted to sell him right now? And speaking of former players and managers reuniting, QPR striker Lyndon Dykes has been linked with a move to Rangers. This transfer speculation, I'm sure, coming out of the fact that Mick Beale previously managing him now at Rangers himself. Dykes is an interesting sort of profile of striker because whilst he's not exactly the most prolific in front of goal, he does offer this QPR side a great deal deal in other areas of the pitch. That game that QPR had against Preston at the weekend, for example, thought that Dykes was actually a real nuisance for them um, in the final third, doing a lot of work off the ball, um, a lot of harrying, hustling defenders and things like that, and opening that space up for you know the likes of Willock to go ahead and play off him. He's 27 now, he scored six goals this season. QPR themselves are in need of adding on more in terms of the final third before they think about taking anything away. So be interested to hear from some QPR fans, what would it take you to be tempted to sell him? as the Rangers' interest does crop up. This next one makes for quite the interesting transfer story. Bournemouth have been linked with the move for Bristol City youngster Alex Scott. Now, in what has been a really quite frustrating and miserable season for Bristol City, it has been Alex Scott who has been one of their shining lights, one of the best upcoming players in the Championship, just 19 years old, and a starter for this Bristol City side week in, week out, and probably one of their more consistent performers, actually, for assists so far this season. Really good player, and no doubt would take a big price tag to go ahead and land him but as Bristol City keep on doing producing these absolute gems and making the most in terms of when to actually capitalize and cash in on them but yeah I'm sure Bristol City fans would be gutted to lose him it would take a big offer and it could be a double deal there eyeing up as Bournemouth are also being linked with a move for Antoine Semenyo. Bristol City did turn down a big offer from a Premier League club in the summer transfer window so it'll be interesting if it is Bournemouth that do revisit their interest in January. 22 years old, he's been an interesting player this season, obviously recently featured at the World Cup for Ghana. Interesting by the fact that he's not been a starter week in, week out for Bristol City this season, which has been a little bit surprising. 11 of his appearances this season have come from the bench and his progression has somewhat halted a little bit. I think he was absolutely skyrocketing in terms of season upon season. His numbers were getting better. He was starting more matches last season. His most prolific with 8 goals and 12 assists. But this season has been utilised in a slightly different way which has surprised me. But that Premier League interest is still there as well as links to abroad as well with Fenerbahce being one other club who I have seen mentioned with him. And we're also seeing Hibs defender Ryan Porteous being linked with the move to several championship clubs. The likes of West Brom, Watford, Norwich, Stoke, Sunderland, Millwall, Luton all being mentioned with this one as well as I'm sure a few others that will throw their hat in the ring. The reason why the defender is so in demand, he's been one of the eye-catching defenders in the Scottish Premiership so far this season. His contract is also expiring come the end of the season so a few championship clubs could be looking to strike a deal for him. He scored three goals this season, does have an eye for a goal, decent area in the air as well, 3.1 aerial duels, 1 per 90. At only 23 as well you'd imagine he'd have quite the sell-on value should you be able to pick him up on the cheap. 
But guys, there we have it. That will now wrap it up for today's video. Thank you very much for tuning in to the transfer rumor roundup. Just a bit of a quick one before the transfer window does actually get underway. As always, if you do go on to enjoy, make sure to leave a like and do stick around and subscribe for some regular championship content. But apart from that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.